a CR Kits FT8 transceiver. Inspired by several designs, including my Noblest Wonder, this was generously sent to me by Adam Rong of CR Kits. It's a full form kit, including the box and the parts that are in this bag. It's a crystal controlled FT8 transceiver on 7074. So if you hook it up to a laptop with this little package, you should be on air transmitting FT8. It's single frequency, single band, but it is single sideband. So you won't have any issues with the other sideband, such as can be the case with simple double sideband type digital transceivers, such as I've described in other videos. Anyway, this is the kit. Let's get it open, put it together, and see if I can get on air and make some FT8 contacts. Printed circuit board, looks pretty decent quality. Three hole plated, the resistors are identified as are all the other parts. Most visible is there's four crystals there so that's obviously a four crystal ladder filter. And that box there, a relay, sockets and possibly other things around the edge. And if we have a look at the bits and pieces, resistors, oh they're blue resistors so Unless they're all of the same value, I think I'm going to use the multimeter and measure them all. I won't bother trying to read their values. And what else have we got? Well, got the crystals here. Don't know if you can read it. Anyway, it says 7078. I think and there's a toid so there's a bit of toid winding batteries that's three double A's so is this actually battery powered a socket and couple of connectors or a couple of cables they must go into the computer and we have a bit of paper here oh what something fell out it is the front panel 13 transistor transceiver for digital and we have a bit of paper now I presume the documentation will be on the website. Ah, yeah, okay. Thank you for your order. Please view all the manuals from Group CR Kits. Okay, so you have to join a CR Kits group, so we can do that. And, yep, get all the documentation. Just on the CR Kits website, I haven't yet uh, joined the IO group, but anyway, there it is. And very, various messages there. Now, for those unfamiliar with CR kits, probably the most popular was the KNQ7A SSB transceiver. And that was basically a very small SSB only transceiver. Single conversion SUPET used a crystal filter and that had a VXO. So you could only cover maybe 20 or 30 kilohertz of the 40 meter band. But people built them and made contacts. 
it was a very small portable transceiver. To get the instructions and documentation, you need to go into the files area and in there, right at the top, 13 transistor 40 meter FT8. So, yep, yeah, okay. Oh, there's a test report. Formal schematic updated, design ideas, assembly manual. So, just looking at that. Um, updated in uh, 29th of the 12th, 2021. Anyway, we'll just have a quick look at that. Um, here is the circuit, okay. Crystal filter there, I'm not going to trace the whole thing, but it's going to be a single frequency SSB type rig. So it's not going to have an intermediate frequency. It would basically just straight through but as it happens with the crystals being on the frequency that you're operating on, no need for frequency conversions. Anyway, it's 13 transistors. There's the low pass filter I can see. There's a transmit receive relay. Um, that's a carrier oscillator down there, culprits oscillator and a buffer stage. That is two diodes there, that's the balance modulator and there's an attenuator there to give it a 50 ohm and in here just look like straight through transistor RF amplifiers crystal filter I'm guessing that it's also used on receive as well um, What's this? I'm guessing up here is um, oh here we are. It's, it's actually labelled um, transmit RF amplifier, transmit driver, transmit final, and there's three three transistors in parallel there. Um, they say it gives you about a watt output, and then there's some receive RF amplifiers there, and a Vox. That's that's right. There's obviously not not much audio needed. There is one receive audio amplifier up there but the computer is pretty good with that it can handle quite a bit of audio amplifying there is however the vox and the switching so that as soon as it goes to transmit sound comes out of the computer that flips it over and controls the whole thing then there's an audio switch there so yep yeah, designed by bd6cr in 2021 Inspired by Noblis Wonder VK3YE, thanks for the credit, and the Warbler K1SWL. I think that the Warbler, I think it's quite an old design. I think it goes back to like maybe the early 2000s, possibly. Um, I think it was used for PSK, and it, it was described in one of the American QRP magazines. Um, maybe QRP quarterly, or maybe it was QST. So enough of the circuit, let's have a look at the manual. And we have here, okay, change history, added a few links and photos, uh, designed by BD6CR, PCB BD4RG, and oh, there's an index. Can we design an all discrete component amateur radio transceiver with a single model of transistor say to in 4401 oh, okay so it's it, um, based from some of the NorCal ideas um, and the 2N222 contest they had specifications 7074 upper sideband oh there we are it explains the filter inspired I think by the bit X with bi-directional amplifiers Anyway, I'll leave you to read the theory. Uh, um, there's a parts list. The assembly. All the transistors are 2 in 4401. So, yeah, what they've obviously trying to do here is use as few um, unique values 
um, both with the transistors and the capacitors so that probably reduces cost module based mode if you're new to the kit please consider this mode so you can build and test each module you're gradually building things and steps to test each step okay that's that's sensible way of doing it step two you build the vox so you start off with the crystal oscillator there pretty straightforward design um, nothing special um, because I, I suppose one way you could approach circuits is put in all the you know some people put in all the resistors of a certain value all the capacitors of a certain value and then you have the whole thing built um, maybe that's faster but in this case you are just putting in just a stage that you want to build and test then when you're happy with that move on to the next one so overall I think it's probably more logical because it will certainly help you with fault finding so the first slot is in there's the Vox um, or oh, you can see the orange thing the relay there mixer transmit receive okay So yeah, it's um, putting things together in bite-sized chunks. So as to how long it will take to build, I don't know, a few evenings, maybe after work, you could do it. So you could build two or three modules each night and test them. Ah, here we are. Battery installation inside is a bit e experimental. I'm, I'm reading out here. If you wish to do so, you'd better understand the potential risk. Just solder wires from the battery pads. Okay, so they're using the batteries inside um, to keep it compact. Um, make sure you hold it steady and don't short with other parts. Make sure you understand the risk of overcharging and overcharging and over discharging hmm I think maybe I won't bother with that I think I might just use external power Oh, speed mode if you're an experienced builder please consider this mode to build save time ah that was what I was saying before yeah mounting all the resistors and diodes first all the flat components all the flatter components in the capacitors and then um, so forth but I'm inclined to build this thing as first suggested by module. Oh, operation, USB sound card. Yes, separate mic and headphone jacks. Okay. Um, software setup. A couple of tips for QRP. So anyway, that's the instructions. How many pages is it? Uh, 28 pages. Now just looking at the power supply, a um, bit of clarification. You've got an option of an external supply, 10 to 14 volts, the battery pack, but the battery holder of 3AA size it's using 14500 size lithium iron batteries 3.7 volts each now you could either print out the instructions or if you're doing it like me and building it in front of a computer then it's a good idea to have at least two tabs with the instructions then you can quickly go between the parts list and the circuit. Oh by the way no solder supplied so if your solder reel looks like this almost at the end then you might have problems completing it. Grab some solder and enough of it before you start building. Just as a hint before you start construction especially with resistors where there are multiple instances of a value being tied together just like here or here then just get a multimeter measure their value and write it that will make your construction so much easier especially when you're halfway through and 
you've got bits and pieces all over the place. Now these capacitors at first glance look pretty similar. They have the same colour case. One on the left is 103, that's 10 with three zeros. That's 10,000 picofarads, or more conveniently 10 nanofarads, or 0.01 microfarad. One on the right is 101, and the one, it's not 101 picofarad, it's actually 100. The one is just, you add one zero, so 100 picofarad for the one on the right. The other thing need to note is the spacing between the leads. 2.5 millimeters for the 103 capacitor on the left and 5 millimeters for the 100 picofarad on the right. Now don't bend the leads to alter that. The circuit board has been made to accommodate those spacings. If you have to bend the leads then double check the values. You may be inserting the wrong capacitor in the wrong place. Something to note is the solder pads are quite small so really helps that you use a fine tipped iron and don't apply too much solder. My tip is a little bit too big for this project but I'm being careful so I should still be okay. Here's the crystal oscillator and buffer complete. Does it work? Switched it on. But not hearing anything from the receiver on 7074. Having a probe around and not finding any 12 volts or in fact any DC voltage around any of the oscillator circuitry. But a bit curious about this diode here which I didn't put in. I'll have a look at the circuit and see if it is important to current getting to the oscillator part of the circuit. As it turns out, it is very important. There's our problem. The diode's in the circuit and we're getting a signal. Not quite on the right frequency. So we'll just need to adjust the trimmer. It's a bit better. It has to be on 7074. Now, ideally you'd be using a frequency counter, but I'll just use the FT817. It's very close. If you're using an SSB receiver to align a crystal oscillator, a problem is getting zero beat because an SSB receiver normally covers frequencies from 300 hertz to maybe two and a half kilohertz. Problem with that is that when you're close to zero beat, you want to adjust the pass band so that you can hear frequencies under 300 hertz. If your receiver has an IF shift control with the FT817, it's a matter of pressing the button in and adjusting this knob down here. Then you can hear signals closer to 7074 than 300 hertz. And that allows you to get a better zero beat. In this case, you can tune off to the side and hear both, which is good. If you look at the display carefully, we're on 7074, 7073.9, it sounds zero beat. 7073.8 also sounds zero beat. 
about 7073.7, you might just be able to hear a low tone. So zero beat is somewhere between 707380 and 90. So we need to bring this up by about 150 hertz. So we are pretty close, but not quite there yet. Now that's moved it slightly. Now we've got silence at 7073.9 and 7074. So it's probably at about 95. So we need to move it a little bit more. Now having a listen here, you can hear a slight growl at 7073.9 and also 7074.1 at 7074.0, nothing. So I think we are very close to spot on, so we'll leave it there. We now have a satisfactorily built and aligned crystal oscillator for this FT8 transceiver. By the way, just read the instructions and there's the note there about installing D7, the diode that I missed out before. Had to happen, first mistake, D7, I had a 1N4148 in there instead of a 1N4007. So I'll take it out. Hopefully I can replace it and not make too much of a mess. The instructions also suggest that the transistors for the power amplifier, which are used in parallel, are as close as possible to each other in their characteristics. You can measure HFE with the transistor test setting of a multimeter and you pick the transistors that are most closest. These three were all in the 340s, good enough for this exercise. The second stage is the audio switch. When audio comes in from the computer, like when you are in transmit mode, it activates the relay and switches parts of the circuit to put this into transmit instead of receive. There's an LED here that changes color from green when it's in receive, you might be able to see it like that, to red on transmit. It's a bicolor LED, so there's two LEDs in one with three legs. Now I've applied an audio source here and the audio source is none other than the FT817. There's suggestions for other ideas in the instructions, but as I had this switched on and close at hand, I'm using the FT817. I have a cable plugged into the headphone socket just there. I haven't got an antenna connected, but there's enough internal noise that when you turn the volume up, audio comes through here. You can hear the relay click and the LED goes into transmit mode. So I'm just adjusting the volume from low to high and you can see that the sound activated relay circuitry is functioning as it should. So that's two stages complete and working. Step three is the mixer and transmitter RF amplifier. As the instructions say, the hardest part of the project for many people is winding the toid. This has three wires, they're twisted together. 
there's use of different colours which are supplied to make things a little bit simpler. The primary is one colour and the secondary the other. Anyway, the instructions refer people to a video by W2AEW if you want some guidance on how to wind it. The instructions refer to red wire, a little bit of supplied, and what they call gold wire, which there's a lot more of because it's used for the other toys as well. The red wire here is used as part of a single winding for the primary and the gold wire you take twice as much and you halve it you, and, and you twist them all together and that forms your toroid. Total of eight turns around the core. Here's the toroid installed just checked it with a multimeter and all the connections are fine. That's something that you have to be careful with, uh, with the enameled copper wire. It can appear to be making contact, but sometimes it might not, if you haven't removed enough enamel. There's no testing process here, so it's straight on to step four. That's very simple, just a few crystals and capacitors to make the crystal filter. Step five is the transmit RF amplifier. Very simple, just transistors or one transistor and passive components. No coils to wind. That's step five done. Now step six, the driver stage. And that does require another toroid though it is simpler than the one that we did before. Next we have step 7, transmit final and low pass filter. This uses three transistors in parallel, same transistors as before, 2N4401, and the parallel gives apparently one watt output. The last toroids are the simplest. Three identical, 16 turns, and they form the low pass filter right at the end of the final stage. Once they're in, the transmitter is ready to test. Okay, ready for the next test. The transmitter is complete but not the receiving portion yet. Though a lot of the circuitry here is common to both, so not really a lot of extra to do. All right, we are set up to test the transmitter. We have the laptop computer with the WSJTX software. There's audio from that going into the transceiver and connected to the antenna socket of the transceiver is this RF power meter. Now if I go to tune, I'll just show you the LED on the transceiver. When I go to tune it went to red, so that is good. That indicates that there's audio getting through it's switching on the transmit receive relay and you might have also heard on the FT817 just in the background there is a signal so it is generating something now the thing about it though is that we're not getting anything at all on the RF power meter so it's generating a signal but it's getting lost somewhere 
in the circuit it's not making it to the final amplifier and if I just feel the underside of the board um, this is the crystal oscillator the balance modulator through there crystal filter now now you can hear that there is a signal with my fingers underneath the crystal filter but I'm just feeling around the amplifier after that oh there is a um, bit of a signal there but nothing on the other side of the final so there is something wrong in the transmitter power output stage or possibly a little bit before I'm just using the multimeter probe only about a meter long as an antenna when I touch it on various parts of the circuit there's a much stronger signal in the local receiver this is the output of the driver but when I touch it various parts of the power amplifier I'm not getting a signal so there's an issue around the power amplifier first thing to test before anything else is whether there is DC at all on the power amplifier if there's no DC supply then it can't amplify just probing around I found that the emitter is 0 volts base is 0 volts and the collector is 12 volts so there's something wrong here power is getting to the collector but nothing on the base and there should be a little bit on the emitter now having a look very carefully you can see that there is a capacitor C31 is on the board between the driver and the final amplifier stage there's a spot for it but no component and we look at the circuit diagram and it's the capacitor that couples the RF from the driver to the final stage so the problem is I missed it no wonder I was getting no output little bit better now detecting RF on the base of the final amplifier but still no indication on the meter measuring current consumption on transmit mode 96 milliamps not on transmit 30 milliamps with the power amplifier properly operating it should be I think three or four hundred milliamps so yet there's clearly a problem with the power amplifier the situation with the zero RF output still not resolved so I thought I'd have another look at the board and I noticed that there are some empty holes now that's okay because we haven't finished the receiver part yet but then I saw R28 space there and a C28 what were these parts looking at the circuit R28 turns out to be very very important it provides power to the first amplifier stage after the crystal filter there is probably a bit of capacitive coupling through this transistor enough to get a bit of output when I put my finger on here but still pretty low level so I'll put in those missing components R28 and C28 and see if I can get a bit more output power now with those parts installed let's have a tune up
and we've got success about one to half watts output with it it's late at night and I'm certainly not going to do any more soldering but let's try an on-air test I can at least put out a CQ call I can have a look at PSK reporter and at least see where I've been detected if I get success there then at least that would be a good note on which to go to bed that that's just a few bursts well success VK4FL receiving my signal at minus 15 at a distance of over 1300 kilometers now just touching the transistors these are the final transistors they're actually too hot to touch I just realized I had the audio coming in at a hundred percent and the instructions for this say that you have to have the audio at a level that's enough to positively trigger the relay but not too much over so I've dropped it down to 65 percent and that should be a little bit less taxing on the transmitter stages reception by five stations up to almost 3,000 kilometers in Eastern Australia and New Zealand pretty gratifying for first up especially given that half my antenna is down at the moment step 8 the receive audio amplifier not much to it just passive components and one transistor similar step 9 the receive RF amplifier also pretty simple luckily we've done all the coils before that's the first receive RF amplifier now on to the next stage which is the last it's another receive RF amplifier looks like a very similar circuit configuration this is it all done all the components on the board let's now connect it up and see if it receives as well as transmits it's just before 6 a.m. so that might be good enough for grey line into Europe I don't know if the one watt will be heard there but I'd certainly be able to hear them if this is working at all well I'm not seeing much on the receiving but it's definitely working as I'm getting signals on the screen let's see if we can boost this up a bit must be a setting in the computer and looking at this WSJT looks like that we can't actually adjust anything it went up to a hundred percent okay the problem was that I was in receive mode and I couldn't adjust it I've now gone to 99% and it's looking a lot healthier I don't know if you saw it there but we'll just wait for it to go back to receive and yeah that's pretty good especially given I've got 
high noise level here. So I've set the receive volume up to 99%. But there's at least some good number of signals being received here. So the volume adjustment did the trick. there's a FK8 station calling CQ at a good signal strength of plus one let us give them a call Well, there's a response. And we have made our first FT8 contact with this 13 transistor QRP FT8 transceiver kit. As for other stations, well, just a few in Eastern Australia and New Zealand. It's still a bit early, just after 6am, and you can see that the grey line will be approaching us in maybe 30 minutes. So that might result in more signals being received and even more contacts. The final job is to put it in a box that supplied with the kit. A nice sturdy good quality metal case with front and rear panels. All the screws went on except for one. There's maybe about a millimetre or two out. So I'll need to enlarge the hole. I'll just do that with a small file. If you don't have that, a small drill bit around 3mm would also be okay. A second contact to prove the first wasn't a fluke, a reply from VK2OV. Another contact, VK5DOC. One thing I should mention is that the transceiver is specified for 1500 to 2500 hertz as the audio coming out. At busy times especially, there can be so much FT8 activity that you have signals outside that. So you're not necessarily going to pick up all signals with this setup, but still, it's elegantly simple, doesn't cost very much, it's under $60 US. So if you're looking for a single band way to get on FT8 for a minimum of expense, and if you do like 7 megahertz, that's your chosen band, then this could be an option for you. It was a fun kit to put together, any issues that I had, as you saw, was my own fault. Uh, it went together very well. It was complete. The instructions, probably not ideal for an absolute beginner. The circuit board was a little bit fiddly if you didn't have a really fine tipped iron. 
so I wouldn't suggest this as a first kit but if you've already successfully built other kits then this could well be a suitable project for you. So thanks to Adam Rong, BD6CR from CR Kits. If you want information on this and other small QRP kits, then look up crkits.com. If you prefer to build stuff from scratch, then you might also want to look at their chalkboard building system. Here it is. It's basically matrix board, but there's copper plating to make soldering a bit easier than just the bare board. You can see that things are organized into sections so you can break off as much or as little as you want. So you could just use a single section for a small project or several for a larger project like a transceiver. There's also a building manual. It's 56 pages and there's examples of circuits and projects that you can build. Um, it is in Chinese but um, there's diagrams there um, there's ideas for various projects. We'll just scroll down and I'll give you uh, a flavour. It's basically small QRP type projects that could be useful. There's a, there's a circuit there. There we are. There's a FM wireless microphone. That looks a lot like one of the talking electronic circuits. There's something else with an NE602. A couple of crystals. A PY20HH little CW transmitter. So yeah, all sorts of little projects that this board could be appropriate for you. So again, information at crkits.com.